Hey yo, the real story of LG continues. You heard? We bringing you that real Brooklyn history. We bringing you those real Brooklyn facts. Once again, this series is not to glorify any crime. It's not to promote the criminal lifestyle. It's to tell you what crack cocaine did to the ghettos of America and what drugs and guns did to our communities. And it's also to document some of the great times dudes managed to have as kids growing up in these war zones out in Brooklyn. You heard? So pay attention and let's learn something. He got me, not knowing, you know, he thought it ain't pop. He pulled me to him. You know, I'm coming into him now. And when I come into him, I hit him twice in the back, boom, boom. So I guess he thought I punched him or whatever, or they thought, whatever. He ran, took a few steps, slashed, started yelling. He collapsed, my nigga. You know what I mean? I thought I caught a body, dude. I'm like, what the fuck? So you said you came home from Cayuga in 91? Yeah, yeah, 91. 91 summer. i never forget, as a matter of fact, um, June 10th. June 10th, 1991. Never forget it, kid. Um, Chicago Bulls was in the championship. I think they won it. Yeah, they won it that year, too. So, you know, they won it that year. Never forget that summer. Came home. You know, I started coming through LG. Felt good being home. Been gone for you know, the 24 months. The two to six. Felt good coming home, you know, coming back to the projects and stuff. You know, I felt, I knew things were just changing, you know. It was still cool. It was good to come around, you know, it was still pulling up. But things were just changing the hood. Like, you know, and that love wasn't, you know, wasn't there like that, you know. So, you know, I just felt it in the air. So I just started, you know, shaking and baking. Then I, you know, I wanted, remember I told you, I was thinking about New London, which is New London. So I went back to New London and I was fucking with one of my mans, you know, that I was dealing with. And we was rocking out. It was rocking heavy. When I came home, we was hanging out. You know, with nothing. When I had nothing, we just rolling, hanging out, taking the plans and thinking what we we're gonna do and how we we're gonna do it. And then he started fucking with my other man, Black Mel. You know what I mean? Black Mel took him. He said, "I'm gonna go out of town with my man." But yo, my family coming home. Take my man with you out to New London. You know, take my family out to New London with you. So you know, I, whatever. I took homie out there with me. And, you know, when I took him out there, you know, it was all love. It was all right, you know, that's my man's family. It was all love. But as time went on, you know, I could sense, like, you know, little, little, like, you know, animosity and stuff, like, you know, jealousy and, like, you know, like, we was in the same, I put him in London. I'm doing us, we're doing me. That's when I met Shorty from Harlem. And when I met Shorty from Harlem a few months down the line, like, you know, it felt like, you know, animosity, like, Always questioning this and questioning my moves, and it was like funny style. So I see things wasn't working out, whatever, you know. And then let me rewind a little bit before that happened. You know, I was special with my man from Grand Ave, you know, rap, my man rap. You know, it was cool, dude, you know. I started dealing with him, and he was, he was watching me, you know, how I make my moves and coming up. So one day he was like, Yo, I'm about to go buy me a car. So I said, Well, that's what's up. So he's telling me to act legends, you know, he's about to get white legend coupe. I said, matter of fact, yo, I'm gonna meet you down here tomorrow. I'm gonna go with you tomorrow and get a whip too. He's like, man, you ain't gonna get no whip. Stop playing. I was like, where is that? You just came home, man. I said, I've been, I've been doing me. I've been saving, kid. And the next guy I met up with Rad, we went to put the Legends Coop, white joint. And I bought me the, the Great Legend four door joint. That's when I bought my hack I was telling you about. When I just came home. I was home like maybe five months. So he was like, damn, kid, you doing it like that? Man, he looked at me a different way after that. You know, he said, oh, this, this dude doing his thing, you know what I mean, he about his money. And ever since then, me and Rab got cool, you know, cool. So we was running together, cool. And him and that was cool, too. You know, that was cool, all the OGs, all the older dudes and all that. They liked them, they respected that. But me and Rab had a respect for me. We also started dealing with each other in the business way, too. So that brought us even tighter. But going back to what I was saying, you know. Rab was so older than you? Yeah, Rab was older than me. Rab got me for like four or five years. And Rab older than me from Grand Ave. Yeah, he older than me. And, you know, he was older than all, and, and I was older than nothing. But like I said, all the other dudes tried to know a lot. 
it came to another lot. Like he, he adapted well with them. They respected him, they seen his style and the way he was. You know? Me and Rab was cool too, but then when you see me on that other level, you know, Mikey getting his money, you know what I mean? Nobody's getting his money too, but everybody knew that was not, you know what I mean? So with me, he started seeing that side of me and he respected it. You know, so then the homie I was telling you about now, I feel like animosity going on. You know, so I bought the act legend. When I bought the act legend, me and Rab hanging out back to back, you know, he's riding with us, but tension, you know? And then I met the shorty from uptown, I'm uptown a lot. I got a girl now, you know what I mean? I'm chilling, you know, I want to be hang out with my shorty. You know, that's why I got a wise dude. Sometimes, you know, think it's all love and it's nothing happen, nah, you know? So then I said, you know what, this ain't going right, man. You take this right here, maybe I get my 100 grand, about 50, whatever it was. You take this rock out, man, do you? And he, and I put him on to the town, you know what I mean? In New London. So I was like, hey, you can rock out, even stay out there either. I ain't with no hattie. I'ma say, oh, but I'm out of town and go to war with this dude and back and forth. I ain't with all that shit. You know what I mean? I'ma get my money. I ain't worried about nothing. Cause it's other niggas that's getting off that train that I don't know about. I'ma stop everybody from coming out there. Oh, you can't come out here. Nah, I ain't with that. So in the process of all that happening, you know, I let the dude rock out and gave him wears and all that. What else? What the fuck else you want? I gave you the red carpet right there. Run, run with it. You know what I mean? So then he did, you know, they started bringing his cool down and his team down there, but it was always tension, always, you know. So let, let me fast forward a little bit. So now I'm running around with Rab, you know. I got cool with Grand Ave. Grand Ave was cool, man. It's like down the block from the project, some good niggas down there from Grand Ave. Good dudes, you know, good hustling dudes. And I was fucking with them. I was fucking with Rab now. And everybody knew Rab, you know, but you gotta give June his props. My man, Big June, Grand Ave. He was an OG, you know what I mean? And he was out there, kid. And before he went in, he went in, the flag got locked up under the bed. And I believe he did 10 years. But the prior time that he was out, and him and Rab started doing their thing, June was the mastermind, son. Everybody don't give, you no. Know, June ain't got that long run. But Juni, man, that was my nigga, son. He, he showed love, you know what I mean? And he helped me in the pattern and the direction where I'm at today. His father's like, the way to move and the way to get money and the way to stack, you know, he was, he was like, the hippie rap was like pinky in the brain, kid, you know? But when he, when, when Junior got locked up, the rap stepped up, which he's supposed to, you know? I mean, rap was rocking, but Grand Ave was, it was all love with them dudes down there, man, it was all love, you know? And then now when I lead this dude, when I go him, that's the same situation with the, um, you know, like the, the Peter Rab shit and all that, what, what my boy Fu told you about, you know? The whole situation with that, like them dudes gassed Peter Rabbit up to make a move that he you know wasn't right, but he jumped out the window and did a move. And we ain't gonna lie, just, just for the listeners' sake, you know, Peter Rab and Rab is two totally different people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rab is from Grand Avenue, that's the OG. Everybody know Rab, respects Rab, rest in peace. And Peter Rabbit, sad to say, but rest in peace as well, he's from LG. That's little Peter Rabbit, you know? I was in green with Rab. I met yeah, son through, I met son from my my son Squeak from Fort Green. Solid dude, solid dude, solid dude. I have mad respect for him and well loved in the streets, you know. But like I said, you know, the streets don't love nobody because you know when you're out in the streets doing dirt, man, you know, life's a circle. And at that time when my boy Rab, he really fell back from me and started saying, you know what, I'm gonna fall back. I ain't with this five eye shit no more. And I'ma chill and I'ma do this and started opening businesses and he was like he was a grown man, but he was really moving like a grown man. There's a lot of grown men out here that move funny, that move different. They don't move like a grown man. Just because you're a man and it's grown, that don't mean you're moving like a man, you know? He started moving like a man, you know, and moving like the boss that he was, but he definitely was bossed up, you know? You gotta give him that. You know, but now he's moving that way, you know? He's moving like his man June was moving. That's how Junie was, you know? Well, Junie had took that fall and again, he did a dime. You know, but they was moving, Jude, they was moving, son. And then, you know, he's moving, he wanna talk about he get businesses, he wanna do this and that, and look, you know? Life's a circle, man. Right when he's trying to move that way and open up shit to do, make moves, life got killed, you know? That goes to show you, man, with that lifestyle and all that, and, and the way you handle yourself and the way you move, you know, some people call it karma, some people call it, you know, Hey, he was in that life, whatever you call it, whatever it is. You know, however you look at it. You know, they always come back, you know? So watch, you gotta watch the moves that you make, man. Because, you know, we may think, oh, 
for the moment and this and that, but it comes back, man. 10, 20 years down the line, we're about to chill. You can't escape from that, man. You know, it's going to come back. Life's a circle, man. And, and I learned that, you know, so I try to move different, and, you know. But long story, man, you know, he started, you know, changing, man. And, and, and he ain't here today, you know. And that goes to show you, you know, that this game right here, you know, it ain't no, you know, in and out, dub, jump in and out. When you win it, you win it, man. That's why, watch how you move out here, man. Some dudes move right and fly straight, and they still ain't here today. So just because you know you do everything by the book, I mean you're gonna be, you're gonna make it out the game. Nah, I don't work like that either. You know, so you know. So now you know I'm making moves without the dude. Now I'm going back and forth. You know, get my numbers up. You know, they doing their numbers, and that's what he set me up that Peter Rabbit thing. You know what? When when when, when food mentioned that Peter Rabbit thing, that dude put a bag in his back. You know. Which they did, you know, respect all due to Peter Rabbit, all love, you know, young dude, wild kid, you know, LG, you know, and me and Rab talked after that, you know, I'm glad we talked and pieced it out, you know, I'm going to get in depth about it, Big Food talked about it, and respect to Peter Rabbit, rest in peace, but yeah, he, um, we, we spoke about it, he, he, you know, he came at me correct, and I, you know, I accepted his apology, though, he ain't know nobody at that time. But the same cast, man, it was like, you know, back and forth with these dudes, man, you know? How the Peter Rabbit joint started, as a matter of fact, was that my car was parked uptown, man. I was, that's how I was moving to Harlem. Like I said, I met Shorty, I was in Harlem a lot. And, and she had my car to act while I was out of town at the time. And she had my car. And she went outside because somebody called us and the car was all fucked up. All the windows was broke. They tried to put sugar in my tank, but I had to, you know, back in the days, you had to, the gas tank with the key, with the gas cap with the key on it, so they couldn't get in there. But they definitely tried to put shook. I broke all my windows and shit. You know, do the blue body work. I'm like, damn, fuck, you know. And they told dude on the block told me what kind of car I was. So now I'm like, oh shit, these niggas. All right, so then I put, I told her to get, she put it. She made a um, this kid from the block drive my shit to the Bronx. Dude, the white, the um, hunch point. Dude, did some body work up there fixing my joint. My shirt fixed like in two days, you know? So now I get my joint back. So I know who did it, so I said, you know what? I drove down to Brooklyn. And when I drove down to Brooklyn, you know, now I'm, you know, I'm stunning now, like, pull up. There's a basketball game going on, you know what I mean? Selma Smith game, and everybody in the park, so I pull up. And then the kids that I, that I felt did that, it was right there, so everybody, you know, outside, I'm like, yeah, man, my car look good, right, you know? Um, some, some niggas hit my shit up, broke all my windows and shit, some wax shit, you know? But it needed, it needed to get touched up anyway, you know? Matter of fact, it looked better, man, because I did some other shit to it. I know that I was burning them up to see how fast my shit was out in the street and do this. It wasn't saying nothing. It ain't gonna say nothing. So, you know, then I'm in there and after that shit transpired, what led to that Peter Rabbit shit up in the game and, and, you know, all that shit happened with what Fu said, you know? And after that situation, you know, then, Another situation I recall, I'm downtown. I see the same dudes. They were some other cat, you know? And I'm like, you know. Now I know when I had the fatigue joint on, I had a, a, a knife on me. I was Puerto Rican, but I had to keep a blade on. I had a switchblade on. You know, I'm just on point. And like I said, you know, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> He's a, yeah, we have to keep a blade, kid, you know? And I opened it up, you know? And I opened it up. And when I opened it up, you know, they looking at me. I'm seeing these niggas, they moving. They always act funny, you know what I mean? So, I don't know what the conversation was about, man. I don't even really know that I give a fuck, you know? But the kid that they was with was, a, you know, he was a wolf, you know, I know him. I know him from my being inside, some kid from Red Hook. I know he was a little wolf, you know, he, he put it in. And I'm watching this nigga. Now he's looking at me, then he's getting closer to me, you know? And I just recall the situation that he did where he, he cut a nigga, he cut a nigga in the street. So he one of them stupid niggas, you know? He bust, he bust a nigga in the face like they was in jail. That's so I ain't gonna let this kid get too close up on him, you know? So I'm talking to these dudes, you know, they're talking with a bunch of, bunch of nothing. I'm coming out of juniors. And when I'm coming out of juniors, I'm double parked. You know, we always double park on decal. And they must have been down there doing something, whatever the fuck they were doing. So I see the kid. And then I'm like, yo. And he inching up to me, last, and he come up to me, he went and tried to grab my chain. I had the Cuban chain. But not knowing, you know, I spent a few dollars for this chain. You know, this ain't no Canal Street. This ain't no downtown shit, you know what I mean? Like, you ain't, my shit ain't gonna pop in three pieces, you know what I mean? So, so, and it had the lock on it with the double lock, you know? 
with some jam. I said, drill my shit, you know what I mean? My investment, that's what it was. I spent a couple of thousand on this shit, this didn't know, you know. So he got me, but he got me not knowing, you know, he thought it ain't pop. He pulled me to him. You know, I'm coming into him now. And when I come into him, I hit him twice in the back, boom, boom. So I guess he thought I punched him or whatever, or they thought, whatever. He ran, took a few steps, laughed, started yelling. He collapsed, my nigga. You know what I mean? I thought I caught a body, dude. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, so I take off, I dip out, you know, it's kind of the same dudes, you know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm home driving, like, what the fuck? I don't kill the nigga, you know? I ain't with that shit, Rab, you know what I mean? I ain't no killer, you know what I mean? I ain't no motherfucking killer. I don't wake up, I ain't like these niggas wake up, oh, when I see these niggas, I'm gonna kill them. Nah, that ain't me. That ain't Mikey, son. I wanted to get money. I wanted to hustle and get money. That was my thing about it. I was just trying to get the money, the cars, and that lifestyle. But with that lifestyle come a bunch of bullshit. You know what I mean? With that lifestyle come a bunch of bullshit. And that's what these kids don't understand. They see what they all that shit and they want to blow up they want it. But you got to be to deal with all the shit that come with it. And you playing the game with no rules, my nigga. You playing the game where anything goes. You know? Anything goes, you know? So, fair game. You know, to anything, good or bad. You know, you gotta be ready for that. You gotta be on point. So, you know, when I did that shit, man, I'm like, damn, man, I done killed this dude, man. You know, what the fuck, you know? And like I said, I, I wasn't with that, you know what I mean? I ain't with that shit. I ain't, I ain't with that shit laying up on a corner, I'm scheming on a dude, you know? What I mean, time was that? Game. What time was that you said when that happened? This is daytime, man. This is like like four or five o'clock, several times early. It was still light out. Mm. It was still lighted. I poked this nigga boy downtown. He ran towards, going towards McDonald's on Flappage Extension, fell out. And then they took off. I'm like, motherfuckers, you know what I mean? You know, I should have poked them. You know, because that was two messages on them came at me behind this dude, you know? And then, then you know, and then down the line, I ended up seeing dude again. And he looking at me crazy, talking about, yo, Mikey, my bag again. Same shit, yo, my bag. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, and you almost got your whole ass tore up, you know? But at that time, I ain't know, you know, I'm thinking I killed this dude the way he ran and collapsed. I thought his lungs collapsed. He up in the motherfucking OR somewhere. You know, I ain't know what the fuck going on. You know? And like I said, at times like that when shit happens, even when I had beef, like I always been a defensive player. You know what I mean? Defense. Like, I mean, I'm protecting myself and if my back is the wall, I'm going to do my best to get myself out of that situation. You know, always been like that. I've never been offered. I ain't starting. I'm not going laying up in the car and there you go and run up behind it and put him in the head. Nah. She gonna come back to you for one, and from two, where's the honor in that? You know, where's the where 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 we got it right up and get it? Ah, you know I respect last. I talked before them cowboys, man. How them cowboys did it? One, two, three, bang, bang. You know what I mean? They shoot each other like that. You know, one behind a nigga and put a nigga in the head. And I've well, seen it happen too many times. But that uh, the killer that that makes you uh, you know I understand. You can sleep good at night with that, so be it, man. More power to you, bro. But I can't sleep good at night like that. No, now if I had to, the lifestyle I chose, like I said, and the game that I chose, no group, then hey, my back is the wall, what do I gotta do? And then I could be like, fuck it, I chose a lifestyle, it was coming at me crazy, I had to. I'm gonna do my time, you know, 10 toes down. But for me doing it on some sucker shit and knowing that could have been avoided and this and that, uh, because you know, I think different, man. I think that's why I'm the person I am today. And maybe that's why I'm blessed to still be here. I think different, I move different. You know, uh, in situations like that, man, I be questioning. So when that course. happened, though, but when that happened, like, when did you find out? You said, how long was it when you found out that the dude didn't die? Like, what you did? You just got low and went I back to... Down. Got low, never heard of it. It died out, died out. But then, remember, I told you, they were still going back to New London. So I'm in New London. And then my cousin said that they saw the kid that was with them, because he was with them out there in Connecticut. They see the nigga coming out the cab, Lincoln, like he, I guess he was in London and what the nigga's moving. And they see him going to come out the mall, going to the mall, with his whole ass hanging out, you know what I mean? He was walking crazy, so he was alive. So as long as he's alive, fuck, he'd be all right. You know, he, he learned that you won't, I bet you he won't touch Mikey chain again. Bet that, you know what I mean? You know, I bet you won't reach for my shit again. So what you did, you just went back to New London the yeah, same night not. that that shit I happened? Went, I don't know if I went back that same night, but I ended up going back and like two days, three days later top, you know? I probably heard that he was all right. And he learned from that. And then it took like maybe a month or two after that for him to realize he, he reached out to me or reached out to somebody. Like, yo, tell that nigga, you know, my bag, he did what he's supposed to have did, you know, shit like that. 
But that was the scenario with them dudes, you know, like going back and forth with these days and trying. That's when I knew that my project was changing, you know. So I stayed back from LG. I fell back from LG, you know. Fuck LG, they can have that, you know. So all of niggas, all of them niggas was from LG. The, all the, the, not, the, the nigga that snatched my chain wasn't, but the dudes that I'm talking about, yeah, they were from the projects, you know what I mean? They was from the projects, and you know, and they was fam, him and, him and his bros, you know. And like I said, I ain't even elaborating on dudes to put their name out there like that. They know what it is. They know what it is, you know. And they, and they, in the long run. You know, things that happen, happen for a reason, you know? They're like, like blessings come to skies, like me and him had that fallout, and this and this and that. I ain't know what that was about. Like, I'm putting this nigga on, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, you know? What the fuck? But years down the line, things come out and it tells you why. At that time, I ain't understand it. I'm like, damn, niggas ain't shit. But the long one, you know, his brother ended up not being right, and, doing, and going out the back door and, you know, talking on niggas and dropping down on niggas, so he wasn't right. So who's to say that if, if we'd have kept on doing business and we'd have been writing, doing this and doing that, and then we up there getting his money, and now shit happens, that nigga tell on me now. Fuck, you told him the mother nigga, why you gonna tell on me? What makes me different? So things like that, I say to say that, happen for a reason. You know, we may not know that reason at that time, you know? And maybe like, damn, why, why, why this, why that? And then as years of time goes on, and you man up and start changing, and start, you know, bossing up and moving different, you're gonna know why. Cause you're gonna see how dudes are still moving the same way or moving crab ways or, you know, doing, and they never shine, they stay on first base. You know, that ain't the object of the game to stay on first base and not elevate. Nah, you gotta get the second, you gotta go third and get your ass home. And that's how you come up and that's how you win the game, you know? But dudes don't see that. You know, dudes just like staying on first base and wondering why they can't get the second, you know? But that's what they do. You know, that's why, I kept them doing what I'm doing. I said, you know what? I'm going to fall back. I started fucking with my Grand Avenue niggas. Man, Rab was on a different level. You know, we get better. Then they coming uptown to see me. I got a shorty uptown. Now we rocking uptown. I got my Brooklyn dudes coming to see me. I'm meeting Harlem dudes in a whole different world now, different lane. And Harlem is like a whole different world. When you from Brooklyn, best style, we growing up, man. We growing up like, you know, we growing up, you know, um, Robin and still, that's how we go up digging pockets and you know grinding. Them Harlem dudes is different. And they grew up on that flashy, on this getting money. They hustling, they flossing. I give them that. I give them that. You know, I give them that. And I go to Harlem now, and I want my Brooklyn girls to hate me, man. You know, I love BK. They stepped their game up crazy. But back then in the early '90s, man, they was Harlem was hitting them chicks up there. It was on a different level than those Brooklyn chicks. You know what I mean? They was normal with their girls. They were their tent, but Harlem was different. Kid. They was doing the 5411s, the Edwin jeans, the mutts, the little tight leathers, the colored leathers on it. They had style, you know what I mean? Shit, then, then we up there, Brooklyn niggas in Harlem, and all my Brooklyn dudes coming to see me. Nothing coming to see me, Rab coming to see me. You know, my best guys was coming to see me. You know, I had my pre voice dudes coming to see me. You know, so it was all love. It was all love. And they all coming to see me in Harlem, and now they hanging up in Harlem, Riding up to, that's when they had a Woolly, Woolly's Lounge on 125th open, popping. They had that PJ's Lounge on 132nd, popping. You know, it was crazy, son. I was like, damn. You know, Harlem's a different experience for me, man. And all my broadcasts coming up there, they were going up to Skate Key in the Bronx on Allerton. That was a movie. The Rink in Jersey. And all my dudes know what it is. We, we was there. We was pulling up crazy. And it was like a whole different lifestyle. That's why I guess they call it Harlem well, kid. I give it to them, you know? And we was running through Harlem crazy, and I was accepted in Harlem because of the way we moved, you know? And we met some good dudes in Harlem, too. You know, we met some good dudes in Harlem. We was moving to Harlem. You know, then we used to go to Nikki's Lounge on 124th, can't forget that. That used to be our spot, Nikki's. On 124th in St. Nick, my man Twin them was there, you know? We met some good dudes, man, you know? And we was running it. You know, then my man Ghost had a gambling joint on 139th. My man Shot Boy, man, used to go up there and gamble 139th in Linux. My man Pop Ghost, he, was, he had a nice little gambling joint, man. That was a spot, yo. The funny shit about that spot, kid, we used to go there. Like, we used to go to Esso's back in the day, right? Then we Esso's, we shoot from Esso's, and we nothing to do. We go up to the gambling joint, like, three in the morning. My man Pop Ghost, man, shout out to my man Pop Ghost. You know what I mean? Harlem legend right there. That's my guy. Um... He had a spot, a gambling joint. And we used to go up in the night, used to dip in the front end, kid, pulling out, going up the cell phone. You know, we looking good. They know, oh, here goes nigga money. Yo, they used to call it nut Tupac, nigga, 
All he used to roll was deuces in that nigga, yo. <laughs> yo, all he used to roll was deuces, son. They used to love that nigga coming through. Easy <laughs> money right there, kid. <laughs> it's crazy, son. It was good days, man. Harlem, man. It took me different, man. You know, I started fucking with Harlem. I started going to Harlem, man. I was like, yo, I ain't got no headaches up here. No this, no that. You no, know, it was nice in Harlem. Harlem was nice, man. So we was just moving around, you know? We was moving different. You know, clubbing up there, doing everything they had. Club 2000, Mecca Audio was up there. You know, we was chilling, man. We was all right. And the funny shit, man, the funny shit, man, the dude I was talking about, I'm in Harlem now. I'm minding my business. Mike, you chilling, man. Mike, you getting money. I'm chilling. I ain't with the bullshit. I just want chicks. I just want money. I just want to have fun with my niggas. And we all eat. We all win, talk shit. Yo, we leaving out of Club 2000. Nothing's a little shit behind me, you know? And talk to some chick, whatever you're doing. And I'm walking to go get the truck. I'm going to walk to go with my car. I hit the corner, nigga, like a 157, and I think that's Amsterdam or some shit. Whatever that block is. I see the same this nigga, son. The same niggas from my page that was all. It was uptown, man. It was him, his brother, and, his, and their cousin. I'm like, these niggas here, man. What the fuck? So I see the nigga. They're like, yo, what up, son? What up? Talking that shit again. I'm like, yo, man. So then. They sent their cousin at me. They always send a message, never doing nothing they sell. They sent their cousin at me. And mind you, I'm a little saucy and shit like this. So I'm like, all right. So what up, what up? And not knowing, you know, like, you know, I'm left-handed. You know, I'm left-handed. So, you know, South Fork shit. I just got to catch him to go guard along right there. Right? So, me, do a little bigger than me. So we throw our shit up. When we throw our shit up, you know, me, I always... What you mean, like, nigga just came up to you and tried to snuff you out of nowhere? Nah, he ain't trying to snuff me. He just like, yo, what up? Like, I see them. They're like, yo, what up? The same what you mean? The, the niggas who tried to who tried to rob you at Juniors? Yes, and sent the Peter Rabbit at me. Same niggas. They are town now. I'm like, these niggas here be like this, nigga. They get the fuck they're on my back for. Like, God damn, nigga. You know? Do you? What the fuck? So I see the nigga, and then he cousin with him. Like, yo, me you always be footing, man. Like, what? So then me talking, yap, yap, yap. So we throw our shit up. And we throw our shit up, me and him now. They watch him, you know? Now, me and him throwing our shit up. Now, we, we, me, I used to, I used to always have this technique, man, when I'm fighting a nigga, I'm throwing my hands up, and I, and, I, and I act like I'm a punch, you know what I mean? This is what I do. This is how I can tell if a, a dude fight, right? Like, that, he, that he know what he's doing. Now, I'm fighting a dude, so I'm, I'm, I act like I'm a snuff, no, but you gotta sell it, man. Guys, you gotta sell it, baby. You know what I mean? You gotta act like really, the punch is really coming. You gotta sell that motherfucker, you know what I mean? So, so, I sell it every time, and the lip comes, you're like, you gotta bite the lip and all that, you feel me? You gotta sell that bitch. And then you can tell if the dude is nice how, how his defense is. And if he's nice with it, he gonna like lock up and, <clears throat> and be ready for it. So when, he, when I did that, I see the dude eyes closed a little bit, he, he, his hands like, like, like no defense, he just ain't know what to do, like, Ugh. I said, oh, I got this motherfucker. Oh, I got this dude. So that's how I know if I get him. So now, and if he do, like the, the, the Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather lot in his defense, and I know, oh shit, right, I gotta try a different approach. You know what I mean? I gotta come at this shit different. We think things. <laughs> I ain't getting knocked the fuck out. But yeah, so I hit him with that, and it was some funny shit, yo. I said, well, this nigga ain't ready. So now I'm camp, and I, I do a little right at him, and I came with the overhand left. And niggas know it, Mikey had that little overhand left, man. That shit works, son. We connect, nigga, that shit hit. I wouldn't get knocked out no more, lad. Fuck that, you know what I mean? <laughs> you feel me? So, so did I come? And I hit this nigga last, that left one nigga. That nigga fell. Like, we must have been in front of like a Chinese restaurant or something. Whatever stores over there with food, my nigga. That nigga fell in the motherfucking trash, my nigga. In it. Like, you know, you remember uh, the Wizard of Oz and the house fell on the witch, nigga? All you see was her feet. What the mother, son? I see this nigga picked it about the garbage there, son. All day he was missing on his head with the motherfucking banana peel, nigga. <laughs> Just a circle, bro, you know, and um, you know, looks like Rav. I'm talking about Rav from Grand Ave, you know. You know, he was about to get out and do right and do all the things and he was opening businesses and all that. But it came back to him, you know. Life's a circle, you know. And you play that game and it comes back to you, you know. You gotta you gotta handle what comes your way. Whatever that is, you know. And with him it cost him his life, you know. And he, good dude, but you know, you play that game, that's what happened. You know, in Rav's situation, it was another thing, like, with this whole LG shit. He was nervous from Grand Ave, but it was a similar situation where a dude that he knew killed him, you know? A dude that he knew, that he raised, his young, you know? And, and 
and he, and he got that right. You know, so it's like, damn, you know, it, it, it all boils down to the fact, again, of when we all take each other out. You know, and every neighborhood got that. Every hood got that. You know, just like my situation with the dudes that I was dealing with, that I spoke about earlier. You know, um, uh, fortunately, it never came down to, you know, me hurting them or they killing me. Or, you know what I mean? Because that would have been another story of, of LG niggas getting at each other. You know, and it ain't personal with them. That shit is over with. Shit is done. You know, but it's my story and I'm going to speak on it. You know, and that's what we're doing. We're telling our story. Mm -hmm. Speak on it, you know. I, it ain't personal with them. You know, unless they take it personal, then that's on them. I'm going to speak to my story. And that's what me and Fruit doing. We're speaking our story of the things that we went through and what we did. You know, I am, I'm not trying to open up old wounds or, or make niggas feel certain ways. Nah, I'm telling my story of what happened and how we lived. And how we got to get it better, do better, you know, and that's what me and Fruit doing right now. Just trying to, you know, let it be known, like, this is what it is, dog, you know? Play that game, that's what happened, man. That's what happened in that lifestyle, kid.